Hi, I'm Hilary Mason. I'm the chief scientist at Bitly in New York City. So at Bitly, I run our data science team, which means that uh, Bitly, as a platform for the sharing of social content online, gathers quite a lot of data, and it's our job to analyze it and make sense of it and uh, make products and services out of it that are meaningful for people. So a lot of our work falls along a couple of different lines. On the one hand, we have analytics, that is essentially counting things in the data that we understand very well. On the other hand, we have um, more research-oriented work, and so some of our projects are things like trying to understand how we can build a real-time search engine for all of the content being shared on social networks and developing both the mathematical algorithms behind that and the infrastructure to make it actually work, uh, which we've done. Um, and now we're interested in understanding at any point in time and anywhere in the world uh, what the current what people are paying attention to so we know what is currently interesting. Um, and we've done this as well. We collaborate with several universities on very different projects. So we have one project where we're working with a team at UC Berkeley that does spam and malware uh, research. So they're trying to find the bad guys. Uh, we have another project where we're working with political scientists at George Washington University um, to understand the meaning of our data around the Arab Spring. And so through Bitly, we see uh, usage of networks like Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, et cetera, during these events, but we don't have the domain expertise to say uh, what the significance is, so we've handed that data off to people who do. Um, though it is interesting that if we just plot click volumes by hour, we see a huge rise in Tunisia right before the revolution, uh, the same pattern repeated in Egypt, a little different in some of the other countries because they cut off the internet. Um, but there's definitely some signal there, uh, so we're working with these guys to understand it. So we can see for each click on a link where that person is located at the city level anywhere in the world. Um, and that lets us see, you know, what are people reading inside a country and outside a country around these themes when something's happening. Certainly, I think we have to expand our idea of cities to include the data that flows through those cities. So we tend to think of them just as the physicality of the buildings and the design there, but really we have these flows of people, and that's what matters. And then people are flowing based on information, and so that matters. And so if you expand your idea of a city to include all of that, then yes, it's relevant. It's awesome. You always meet interesting people and have good conversations, and that's the most important thing.